Okay, we will be having the camera on today, so I've got to turn that on. Probably means I should have... Which gaming setup are we in? Gaming 2? This game can get a little deep, just so we're aware. Oh, Edith Finch. A lot of this isn't going to make sense to you, and I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning, with the house. We're going to turn it down just a tiny bit, everything else except for the dialogue. Minecraft got an update? What? I lived here until I was 11, but this I This game is gonna get heavy, Bart, okay? Just so you know, it's okay to crack. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. Is that it? I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. This is a story-driven game. If we finish this early, we'll be playing some battle uh, oh, well. tabs. My mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. The finches. Left or right, Bart? One or right is this way, correct? Yes. I should be writing these down so that way we can like I redo it. This way in a long time, but I saw a few have prints. Where? Bambi, I don't want to hurt you. I want to hug you. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. Spooky! Can I get in the truck and drive away? No, no, that's a wall. I don't want to hit a wall. I want to I want to get in the truck. No, okay. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. Okay, Bart. Right or left? I've I've seen someone play through this before. Left? Alrighty. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17 year old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. Do we still want to keep going left? We could turn right and go through that front door. Left or right? Hold on, I gotta mute. I 
I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Looks like we have no choice but to go this way. I love it. Prowling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. And there's another thing, but that's a spoiler alert. The power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Edith Edie Dawn Lewis. In memory of Lewis Finch. December 27th, 1988. November 21st, 2010. Beloved brother to Edith, son of Dawn. Great grandson to Edie. Memorial service. Okay. Oh, hey, look, let's have some water. We cannot have the water. Like how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. Really? Because Asian culture tends or to be very superstitious. Or how started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. Molly makes a rando appearance. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it. Like a smile with too many teeth. Hold up. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Mm. 
No, we'll come back for that. My mom wasn't much of an optimist, but she never stopped believing that my brother Milton was alive. Edie told me once that every finch who ever lived is buried somewhere in the library. Let's check what's upstairs. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. The last time I was in Edith Sr.'s room, I was 10 and she was painting my portrait. My grandpa Sam spent seven years sharing a room with his dead brother, Calvin. As a kid, I just assumed every house had peepholes and sealed rooms you weren't allowed inside of. I keep wanting to run with the run button I have for Minecraft. You know, you play too much Minecraft when. Barbara was a child star for two years until America grew out of it. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. Molly always seemed like a girl I could imagine being friends with if she hadn't died in 1947. This is what happens when I press shift. So sadly, no. I spent a lot of time playing in great uncle Walter's room. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. I just want to see if there's anything else. Is that the old house? I think that's the old house. You guys can see everything, okay? Yeah? I've only got one viewer, Bart. You can see everything, okay? Correct? <laughs> From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. But I had no idea what was behind that door. Your mother's Just room! like I had no idea where all this was gonna lead. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's gonna happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. My Halloween candy was all gone. Yeah, I was that kid who literally... I, uh, I'm, I'm Canadian, so... Not for me, but happy Gobble Gobble Day if you celebrate. I thought about eating Christopher, but I held back.
She named her fishy Christopher? That's cute. Where's her gerbil, by the way? I kept eating and eating. Oh, God. Ew. What's outside the then door? I heard chirping outside my window. Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. The ch there's chains on the window. And suddenly... I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Where'd the birdie go? She was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the worst, isn't it? I gobbled her up. And suddenly... I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. Where are we going? Where are these little teeth in the grass? Rabbits. Back there. Turn. Bro, oh, well, um, have to gobble gobble, babe. We're gonna gobble gobble as a sharky shark. I rolled off the cliff Whee! and into the ocean. Now I was hungrier than ever. Yes, it is. I wanted fat, juicy seeds. I tore off her flipper and it tasted really good. I am coming to get you. 
got done tight. But I was so hungry, I jumped out of the water. When I opened my eyes, everything had changed. Now I was a monster, and I smelled people everywhere. Okay, so where am I supposed to be going? The song is only so long. We're gonna go this way. Him to the Kraken. Hold on, let me try that again. Yeah, the game is a little bit on the weird side. But that's only the beginning of it. Like, the beginning of it is extremely weird. Ah, sugar honey iced tea. We're gonna have to go through all that again. Give me two seconds. I just gotta... We're just going to pull the chat bot down here. No. Shoot. Okay. Well, that'll work too, I guess. No, it won't. No. There we go. I grew up looking at Molly's room. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. Well, I missed that earlier. Let's try this again. December 13th, 1947. Dear diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. Hold on, give me two seconds.
the gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. We're gonna go around the guy this time. I ate a lot of things that night. These aren't real berries, kid. Stop eating plastic. You could eat toilet paper, that's fiber. I kept eating and eating. Just stick around, Bart, trust me, you'll enjoy it once we get to the parts that aren't weird. Then I heard chirping outside my window. I thought about eating Christopher, but I held back. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. <laughs> no, but that makes it sound more reasonable as to why. I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. I jumped and I almost got her. I could tell she was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. Where did she go? Oh, up here, right. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. A mama rabbit. She was almost too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark. Okay. Oh, nope. Nope. Yes. Yes, there we go. I rolled off a cliff into the ocean. <laughs>
Now I was a monster, and I smelled people everywhere. I was big, and I moved real quiet. <laughs> I'm gonna swim towards it. Yep, yeah, I'm pouring myself a cup of juice. Hold up. Just give me two seconds. I just wanna check something. Do we have desktop audio on? We have desktop audio on, okay. I slithered onto the sand, and the good smell went into an old pipe. Twas your gerbil. I got closer and closer. That's just a guess. I don't remember what it is. My stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know I will be delicious. Weird. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. Hold on. Okay, we're good to unmute. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here. That was a kitty! Hold up, I can't go back? Dang it. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Oh, these are all her birdies. See, I plan on doing something similar to this, except for what I'm going to do is when I'm done having pets, I'm going to buy a plot in a pet cemetery, get one tombstone and bury them together. Till then, I have a bunch of urns in my room. <laughs> Not that I had a lot of pets, but you know. When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, 
She could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. One summer, they evacuated the island, but Edie refused to go. For a few weeks, she was a celebrity. I hadn't thought of myself as Edith Jr. for a long, long time. My friend Bigfoot. Random junk. Sounds like my desk. Would you look at these hats? Edie gave a big interview about a mole man living under the Finch house. My mom was furious. Shrine sketches. Even in her 90s. Sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. Oh, here's the pink bathroom. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse, his wife Ingeborg and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. It's but the 40 house. foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. There we go. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Okay, close. Thank you. Norwegian folk tales. You ever look at these old photos and like get like fascinated and creeped out by it? Yes, the bathroom is pink. Oh, she has hands of all the peoples. And bird nests. This woman is weird. I love her. She's awesome. She's like the awesome kind of weird. Those are the twins. Lewis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. Okay, is there anything else I can look at, read, or do anything with before we go into the... What about the oxygen tank? Nope. The pills? Nope. The garbage can? Nope. 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 Picture? Nope. Okay, we're good. In we go. Why would you drill a peephole into a bathroom? There's a secret in this bathroom by Sven and Edie Finch. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. This would be a fun game in VR, just saying. Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. Calvin Finch. Look, there's a deer. Those are negatives. 
So, education time, Bart. I don't know if you know how photography worked back in the day, but what you did is you had a negative and you had a positive of the photo. So you took your negative, which is what you had on those nice little rolls of film, you put them through a processing thing, which made a positive, and you ended up with this. I don't know all the processing. All I know is that you weren't supposed to have any light, which is why the red light is there. Milton. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin, and that he never talked about him. To command center. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother by Sam Finn. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. At Barbara's funeral, he swore he'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Hold on, I think it's best that I just turn off the cam today. Just in case we have people coming down. I'm just gonna turn that cam off. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Alvin, I'm not gonna tell you again. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. Yeah, if you can figure out how to, uh... The day he made up his mind to fly. And he did. Process those at home? You could probably find a bunch of old photos. Some people keep the negatives. It was a habit that a lot of people were Calvin's into. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. We actually have a few negatives that I kind of want to go through and keep, just After in case. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Can we put it back for Edie? Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again. I like this house. The passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Do we go out here? 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Katie's father, Odin, built the original house. Still need to figure out how to get up there. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. How is that not molded I never out? about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. Oh, this one's fun. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. I just took a sip of juice. Oh, Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it a surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up, a has-been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just the boost her career needed. Oh shoot, I was supposed to be recording this too. The scream hadn't aged Shoot. Well. <laughs> Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's <laughs> father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was canceled. Uh, bring the little brother? Okay, I'm hearing frustration. Just saying, that's what I would do? I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him, right on cue. She reached for the music box. Oh, okay, I get to do this. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick, but the house was silent. Rick? Are you okay? This isn't funny. She found Rick's crutch and imagined the worst. Simulator and go. Bonus points. The gang's leader is the infamous Hookman Killer, Dr. Carl Hamill, who impaled him and then ate his family ten years ago tonight. Yeah, there's blood. Yeah. Oh, it's 
rattled and grew still. Oh dear! <laughs> Rick? Barb, relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you <laughs> she threw him out. But she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Hours later. Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Okay, I'm coming up, but if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. What, I can't knock everything off the shelves? Can I at least knock the chair? Yeah, I can knock the chair. Spooky, scary skeleton. Hello? Describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quite smashing. <laughs> Where do I go? Ah. That night, she played her part beautifully. Molly's door hadn't been opened in years. The hinges grow. Listened for his breathing, but all she heard was. Oh, Jesus. Someone at the door was dying to speak to young Barbara. At the door, she heard whispering. Don't do it. From inside the house. <gasps> oh dear. Surprise! Bravo! You were wonderful. The monsters had come to surprise her. From Barbara, it was a dream come true. Then she saw what kind of monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final 
children, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. Ah. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter, hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard. But that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box was all they ever found of her. Her Ugh. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. <laughs> Lame. Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered. As absurd as that comic was, maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. I guess now I know why mom doesn't like me playing with the music box. Do a new music box. Oh, hey, look, the pool table is here and everything. Where's the saw? There it is. Is there blood on the table still? Oh, look, baby stuff. Mom said the basement was off limits, unless I wanted another tetanus shot. Dragon slide. I saw Edie sneak down to the basement once, carrying packages. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaking started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. Yeah, I need to get a bigger That's mat for here. Saying. Having a schedule, living for today. 
I always expect it to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. This is true. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just stop whatever that thing was it was gone maybe it got tired of waiting or maybe I just got tired of being afraid Yeah, I need one of those bigger mouse pads. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. Hold on, let me just look at something. I have here. to leave. Well, I still can. Just give me two seconds. Okay, that's good. I have five dollars. Let's see what I can find. Just give me two seconds. 10, 14, 20, 30, 20, 17 dollars. I'm gonna miss these deals. I should have gotten a gift card and I knew it. I just need something big. Oh, hey, that one's Kraken themed. But I also kind of want something with like a wrist rest on it. Because my current mouse pad has one. But the other option would be just to put the uh, current mouse pad on top of the other one. Just as like a spillover thing. Let's see if I can find anything quickly here. Leave it at that for now. Let's keep going. Still there, Bart? I know it's out there, somewhere. Yay! Whatever Still think this Barbara. game is weird? And Molly. And Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. Yeah. But I need to stop living the same day. Even if it kills me. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. 
I don't mind if I only have a year left. Or a month. Or a single week. I'd be happy with one new day. I can already imagine the sun on my face. Walter died when I was six. I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me. There's nothing else we need to collect. And so we follow the Walter. I'd be afraid of the slatter. Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. Well, at but least she had, had a nice setup. About an uncle under the house. He had lots of books. I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made. What in the heck? Did he just dispose of his garbage in a big hole? Trying to bury something that's still alive. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. Oh, poor Walter. I'm assuming the track used to go around that way. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. And the history that's that part of. Not creepy at all. Right, Bart? Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. Totally normal. Totally normal. But um, because it's a totem pole. Get it? It's totally normal. See what happens when we go this way. If we can. Please don't leave after the joke.
Why did they not attach those lights into here? I know. I should be careful. And when you look at the house, that history of imagination and stubbornness and madness, any of it seems possible. Trash only. I think we've been surrounded by death for so long, we've just gotten used to it. Is there anything back here I should be looking at? Nope. Just trash. Swim away, do 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 do. <laughs> Kidding. What, what I can't use the lamp? finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? This one! It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but... The pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Oh, the fishy! Look at that, they gave the fishy one a shadow. Bob was a dog. Three of the gerbils are mine, and I am not done. Stop. Stop packing. No idea what Shansi is because it doesn't say. Did, was there a Fuago? Barely. Coco, Tucker, Charlie was a kitty. Daisy, Lucy was a doggo. That one was the bun bun, that one was a fish fish. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. Molly Finch, born December 11th, 1930. Oh, she only was 10. Calvin Finch. Well, he was 11 at least. Sven. I'm not doing the math. Herb Knids Walter Finch Barbara Finch she died on her birthday? Oh, that sucks. Nope, that's the pet cemetery. We've already checked that one out. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. Statue suddenly comes alive and chokes me to death. There's a babby. I want to see what the babby looks like. Babby has no face. It's spooky. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. I don't have coin. I cannot do. Oh, I can do. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Mm. Who's this? Is this Odin? Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. Suddenly, I become a shark. Flop, 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 flop. I'm kidding. I'm trying to bring some light into this dark, spooky story. Is 
Sanjay. She lost two of her brothers, Kumar. just like I did. I get Louis why she tried Finch. so hard to protect us. Here's a bench. Where is she? Where is the mother? We never found Milton's body, so my mom insisted we were putting up a monument, not a tombstone. Where is the mother? Did she not? There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Dude, if I ever get married, I'm Part definitely going to be buried next to my she husband. All along, for me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. Be careful. Don't be suspicious. But also be careful. But looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. What? Encoding overloaded. Don't know what that means. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Do we want to do that one first? Oh, look Sam at this guy. Sam spent his life shooting photos, but mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. I apologize for the frame rate. No, 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 pick it up. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Perfect. It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? I will never forget this weekend, Dad. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. Aw. You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. It's still freezing, though. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Hmm. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. Dad! Good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Dad, I... I... Just breathe. Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Great shot, Don! Oof. That is quite the action shot. I'm proud of you, Dawn. Always remember that, okay? No, I got cut. <laughs> Dad, it, it's twitching. I think That's it's totally so normal, Dawn. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! Oh! Okay, how's the frame rate now? Are we better? Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me.
But is it better? I don't know. Wait, wait, I'll wait till you say you're back. Before I progress any more of the story. I've also gotta go to the bathroom. Like now. Usually I can hold it for a while, but I've drank some liquids, so we are going to BRB. I I have to I have to use the bathroom, so we're gonna just Alright, I am back as well. Ugh, I just gotta switch it back from the RB. There we go. I just gotta also get comfortable. Here we go. Closer. There we go. Okay. Frame rate should hopefully be good. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. I want to read it. I can't read it if it's all flippity floppity. Give me the paper. Did we unmute? Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. Sharky missed this. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. Sweetie. Never leave a baby unattended. Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. Ducky! So much of Calvin. Lost. 
lost in his imagination. Whatever it was he saw, it sure made him happy. Encoding overloaded. We're just going to turn everything down a notch. Come on. Give me a minute. There we go. Restart number three. Hold on, let me just double check what all this is about. Oh, he's learning how to use the ad, everyone. Good job, buddy. You're still an idiot. Oh, that's okay. You're a nice idiot. Okay. Which means we gotta drown the baby again. Great. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. down again. Last time's over, Gregory. It's time to... Hold on, sweetie. Ba -ba 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 Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. Ducky! I wonder what he saw. I see duckies. We already got the achievement, we don't need to get the achievement again.
song. Sure made him happy. I know how silly it sounds. I've got a mute. More than likely. But I'm worried about a baby being too happy. Sam. No, no. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet... A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. Yeah, it's not letting me control it with. But though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom or the words that I, I now remember. pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. The wind picked up, and panicked geese nailed that one. Quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power, but all my father said to this was, make the music louder.
I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. No, oh, no. She never talked about him, but mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. I want to look back through the people to see what the other side is. Okay, so what is this? Greg P. Baby. <laughs> Wow. Oh boy. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. We could, but we're not going to because I don't want to have to climb back up. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. The house had to get a little bigger, but hold on, hold on, Edie hold was on. used to that. I'm hearing weird noises and I'm not sure if it's the game or if it's outside. It sounds like it might be outside, whatever it is. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. Hey look, they had a durable. But it didn't last. I am aware. Lewis rules. Odin Finch, the curse. History. Observation, question, research, hypothesis, experiment, data, conclusion. To teach and to learn. Oh, she wrote it. Hold on, itchy head. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Buzz, buzz. What is this buzz, buzz? Shit, I missed a premiere. Oh well. I don't like participating in YouTube live streams anyway. <gasps> look at this! Would you look at this? Wow. 
one. And he's making a castle door, a proper castle door for his thing. No idea who that is. Milton definitely looks like he could be part Indian. Or at least that he's mixed. Milton Finch in the magic. Although her skin tone isn't exactly pale either. disappeared. Won't let me do it again. It won't let me do it again. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. All right, we can't go around that way, I forgot. What is up with that light, bro? That is spooky. Okay, up we go. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. I'm gonna have to mute. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to wander. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. 
and toads. things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. Yes, I was muted. Sorry about that. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. Yeah, it's just as hard to so do. I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. talked about starting a band and he was always humming something still getting that encoding overload Every day warning. his imagination grew stronger he no longer spoke at the cannery a lot of it overload was as reliable as ever Is there anything else in that doesn't need to be? Then one day it struck me that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he Yes. Won. Probably. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewis here. St. Louis. 
he started drifting away from our reality. And ran aground into a rock. Minneapolis. Bro, Until one day town. he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a... handsome queen. Queen was on her own quest for sinister serpents. She followed the sound of her. Electric sitar. I'm trying to concentrate. Usually I'd be like, you guys make a choice, but I'm trying to concentrate right now. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. I don't think he's going to lose it until the right moment, though. But he was so though. proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. What is it with this overloading? Gosh, this does not bode well for sh streaming tabs. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. Okay, we're gonna drop the graphics down one more. Well, no wonder why it's still on Ultra. And then it struck him. That the real Lewis was not the. See if that helps. Salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Oh no. We began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Oh, look at the shadow. I'm the princely man. That's he began probably to despise Lewis, the cannery the man worker. With a royal contempt. Yep. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. Towards the light we go! The palace would be packed with his companions. There are my musicians. 
Okay, Bart, right or left? The wise Calico had insisted on advising him. Molly. Oh, that's the kitty! Holding his crown. We're still going left. There was only one thing left to do. Yeah, I think you know what's coming. Bend down his head. Look away. And the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son, was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. You can look back now, by the way. Don't know if you figured that one out yet. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. Is this where we came in? This is where we came in, right? Yeah. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. 
Aegis has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay? No. Open. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. Can I run? But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. Oh, you're just gonna keep walking in a straight line? I got turned around. I started seeing things. Following the deer. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and- Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. What happened to the book? I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. Can we go look at the book? The next morning- We're gonna Google what happened. Her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. The rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while, and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. Uh-oh, I think I'm being birthed. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. But 
I guess, if you're reading this now. Things didn't work out that way. I watched Shark Wellington play this game, and the theory is, is that the this things is that where they your wanted story begins. the most I'm sorry, is I won't what to see ended up killing it's them. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Who's the father? I want to know these things. Googling. What remains of Edith Finch? What remains of Edith Finch? Okay, development, recession. No, okay. Um, okay, story explained. What remains of Edith? The story of that giant sparrow has created for what remains of Edith. Edith. I can't do Edith. Edith Finch is simple but beautifully told as Edith. We return to the family home where the Finches lived for more than a century after the first house sank just off of the shore after they immigrated from Europe. Edith has returned to find out what happened to each member of her perennial unlucky family. She wanders around the house, one that was built upon repeatedly over the years. Uh, look for looking like an image out of Tim Burton thing. Okay. Okay, Molly's story and ending. Odin. Odin's story is far simpler and is the origin of the cave. Uh, I can't English. Odin's story is far simpler and is the origin of the Finch house and how the family came to be as they are. The story of his death is told through a series of images narrated by Edith and that tell of o how Odin left Europe to escape the family curse when his house wrecked off the coast of Washington, drowning him in the process, his daughter Edie and her husband Sven and Sven and Molly survived the beginning and began building the house Edith is now exploring. Odin is the first member of the Finch family to be buried in the cemetery. Okay. Um, Walter... Wait, what happened with Molly again? Uh, first you play Strange Heart is hybrid of death through the journal finds in a cupboard. She attempts to sneak food and becomes a cat. She says, Most likely the explanation is that some of what she ate, berries, toothpaste, gerbil food, poisoned her, and she began to hallucinate these strange happenings, wrote about it in her journal, and died from the effects. Some other theories suggest that it was a fever dream and that she died in her sleep, or that she went looking for food outside her window and fell to her death. However, since she was able to write about what happened to her in her diary, it's more than likely a hallucination becoming those animals that she died after writing about it. Okay, so that explains her. Walter was... Uh, okay, so Walter is the guy who got hit by a train um, when he left the bunker. That kind of happened. Don... No, Sam.
Okay, we're just gonna leave that music going. Okay, Gregory is the youngest member of the Finch family. He died in an unfortunate way. Written Sam and Kay's divorce letter. Gregory saw things. I mean, there's, he would laugh and so on. Okay. His mother Kay got distracted by a phone call after she emptied the tub in the water. Gregory managed to fill it up again. The tub fills as Kay argues with Sam on the phone and Gregory drowns. Oof. Remains of Edith Finch, Gus. Gus wasn't in control of what happened that day. Instead, the tale tells of how he was killed by a storm at a wedding he didn't want to attend. The rest of the family were safe in his shelter, and Gus was sulking away from them and was killed by flying debris that the storm picked up. Okay. Okay, so the magic paintbrush thing. It is unlikely that he disappeared into magic painting since the rest of the stories are grounded in reality once you decipher them. But he probably disappeared one day, never to be seen again. However, Ian Dallas says Milton is king... is the king, not the protagonist, in The Unfinished Swan, and that he considers it to be canon in the giant sparrow universe. Maybe then Milton did really draw himself into another world, never to be seen by the finches again. His true fate is something you'll have to decide for yourself. Okay, so Lewis story is upsetting. So this is the guy who chopped off his head. As though he only wanted to be crowned and live his life in imagination and turn into the real world. As he bent his head down for the coronation, his head was taken off by the guillotine, represented by the machine in the cannery. He'd taken his own life so that he could live the life he felt he should and get away from the real world. Okay. Edie and Dawn. Okay, Edie... Okay, after Lewis's death, Don decides to get Edith away from Edie and the curse that has taken over the Finch household, but she didn't tell Edie until the night they left. Edie wanted to tell Edith about the family curse and stories of how her family lived and died, but Don blamed her grandmother's storytelling for the curse being a reality. She felt that without these stories, the family would have wouldn't have been so unlucky, therefore... Decides that her and Edith should leave the curse behind, even if Edie insists they cannot run away from it. They leave when Edie still, ha when Edie still at the house, and they never see her again. A few years pass. Dawn gets sick, cancer, or some terminal illness. She begins to get better, as many cancer patients do. The sickness returns, and she dies, leaving Edith on her own as the sole surviving member of the Finch family. Um, okay, so story and ending explained. That is until Edith realizes she's pregnant. We first hear she's pregnant after learning about Walter's death. We, he believed in the curse as much as Edie, so Edith speaks about it in her commentary as she explores the grounds of the cemetery of Finchess, she clearly is speaking to her son slash daughter as she climbs towards Sam's room and says, Maybe we believe so much that the family curse, we made it real. Which is how Dawn felt about it the day they left. However, Edith wants to ensure that her child hears about the fate of their family, so she writes down everything in the journal once she reaches what used to be her room. Even though she says maybe it would be better if this all died with me, she knows the story of her family has to be passed on. We hear heartbeats and Edith gives birth, her words appearing in what seems like cells floating in blood vessels. The heartbeat quicken, gets quicker and halts and everything stops, yet Edith keeps speaking. 
The image fades to someone reading the journal. Person with flowers diary, Edith Finch. Edith died during childbirth, but the diary told her son what happened to her family. Edith was just 18 when she died, leaving her son alone and the sole surviving member of the Finch family. Her son is all that remains of Edith Finch. Okay. The ending isn't clear as some of the stories throughout the game are so are open to this explanation is simply what I felt. Okay. And that is what remains of Edith Finch. Oh, hey, look, we can replay a story. Okay, Bart, looks like you're the only one who stuck around. Do you want me to raid someone? Or do you want me to, uh... Are you okay if I just end it here? Because I'm thinking I just end it here. <laughs> okay. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. This is something outside of the normal for me to do, like, story-driven games. Especially because I have speech impediments and I have, like... Well, I don't have bad speech impediments. Like, Edith Finch still comes out as, like, the th sounds still come out really bad. And... Um... I do have a bit of dyslexia, so sometimes reading can be hard, but this one was great because it read to me. So if we can find more of these games for cheap that are story driven, I would play more of them. But that like, read to me. I'm not going to sit there and read. Like, I don't mind reading the, uh, the occasional word. But I'm not sitting there reading everything all dang day. But anyway, thank you for tuning in. Tomorrow we are going to be doing something different. I'm going to be doing a learn how to use a software thing. Because I want to make a video for Rip again of his dog. No, I don't know that one. But I want to make a video of him... F oh no, for him, of his dog. Kind of like I did his highlight video. And I got this new software and I kind of want to learn how to use it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a stream of editing. And then we'll be back to Minecraft on Monday. But thank you for tuning in. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow at 1pm my time. Which is our normal stream time. And I hope you have a good day. Happy Gobble Gobble Day. <laughs>